Alright. Okay. Please rise for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I call this meeting of Independent School District 544 to order. Uh, clerk, will you establish a quorum for us, please? Kirby Anderson. Here. Natalie Knudsen. Here. Melanie Cole. Here. Matthew Lemke. Here. Missy Hermes is present. Stephen Vegasa. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, I need a, uh, a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So I move. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda passes. Moving on to acknowledgments, we have a resolution acknowledgments. Would you like to? Mm -hmm. I'll offer the following resolution on acknowledgments. Uh, thank you to Michael Harlow for his donation of flutes, clarinets, and a trumpet to the Kennedy Secondary School Music Department, and to Robert and Terry Blackwelder and Sammy Ebert for their donations to the Otter Angel account, an account created to anonymously assist families unable to pay for student meals, and to West Central Initiative for their donation of conference room tables and chairs. Do you have a second on that resolution? A second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Natalie Knudsen? Yes. Melanie Cole? Yes. Matthew Lemke? Yes. Missy Hermes? Yes. Stephen Vigasa? Yes. Kirby Anderson? Yes. The resolution passes. Thank you. Moving on to reports, uh, we have Kirby Anderson first, 544 Education Foundation and Finance. Um, nothing in finance right now, but on the uh, 544 Education Foundation, we will be meeting on Thursday at noon. Um, so a lot of times our, meet, our meeting here is after that meeting, but I will say that we did serve uh, at Otter Pride Night Friday night before the football game, and we served 500 uh, tacos in a bag. We ran out late at 7 o'clock, which was perfect. Um, we also served lunch for in-service on the last day of, for the teachers uh, the week before. And on, on, it was Thursday at lunch, and that was barbecues. And we served 350 in about an hour. So that was a good, a good, uh, good effort there as well. Um, we, had, we had the golf tournament the, the last month in July. It's actually in July. And uh, the foundation made about $4,800, just over 4800 on that. And there are 97 classroom, classroom wish list requests, and 50 of those have been fulfilled so far. So uh, the grant deadline is Friday, October 4th, and so we'll be meeting this Thursday for a regular meeting, and then the annual meeting uh, will follow that. So, will be there. Jeff, you gonna be there too? Yes. Okay. All right, that's all I have to report. Any questions for Kirby? Okay. Melanie Cole, Special Ed Co-op, Region 1 and Activities. The Special Education Cooperative met today and had a slim agenda, but one of the things I found pretty interesting is that uh, there has been a new directive from the state about um, children with reading problems and dyslexia, and they shall have a dyslexia assessment if they're not reading competently by third grade. And so this isn't, I don't believe it's a fully developed plan yet, but, and certainly resources have not yet been offered for this, but it is, it is something that's new and um, it will uh, change it, shift it. Shannon Erickson, the director, explained how that um, it used to be a general education consideration and now they're um, tagging it as a special education disability. So that would, that would be a pretty major shift. And um, so that, that is, a development other than that um, yep that was about it our audits coming and we had a few um, couple of open positions over there as far as region one we did not meet last month couldn't come up with a quorum so I have no update there the activities subcommittee hasn't met in the last month. Okay, any, so any questions for Melanie thank you Melanie uh, Mr. Hermes staff development and curriculum review staff development met just right before this meeting and um, there was a lot of good discussion about the fall in service 
and it was interesting to hear what the teachers there um, thought about the um, presenter on differentiated instruction. And um, then um, I, a lot of excellent uh, upcoming workshops and um, conferences that teachers are going to already starting in November. And so um, we only really have, that's a, a budget typically of, of $30,000 and there's approximately one-third of that left now to last for the rest of the year. Right. And then on, uh, oh, any questions on that? Okay, and then uh, curriculum review, we don't meet until October. So people in the community that would like to be on the curriculum review advisory committee are welcome to um, send in information to, I think it's Carrie Thompson. Any questions for Missy? Okay, now I can add some wellness policy and buildings and grounds. I have zero to report. Wellness meets tomorrow. Other than that, nothing going on yet. Under my reports, uh, Lakes Country Service Co-op met August uh, 15th. Uh, I think a couple of the, one of the big highlights is just on the new insurance pool that we have been doing now with uh, Lakes Country Service Co-op did kind of a statewide pooling and one of the, uh, so there's different areas, but one is uh, county and cities, and they ended up with a 2.2, overall 2.2% increase for the year, so coming forward. So it was a really good year for the, for the, the co-op uh, in general for increases for health insurance. So that was a nice trend to see. Um, and then the other thing was just on the health and safety is they now have, in their region, they have 100% participation. That's the first time that's ever happened. So, Fantastic. Yeah, they are excited about that. And Minnesota High School League does not meet until October, so I have nothing to report on that. Is there any questions? Health and safety, you mean that 100% of the districts in the cooperative area are utilizing the yes. cooperative for that? Service? Yes, there was one school district that was not utilizing them. Um, they had a long standing with somebody else, and they decided not to go to the Service College. So that makes 100%. So. Steve, I guess uh, legislative liaison and meeting deferred. I don't have anything to report on either uh, group. Um, Jeff, do you know when meet and confer is going to meet and confer again? I have not heard anything about it for a while. So. Um, this is like my third my report where I've had to say that. <laughs> but usually they're pre-scheduled. Yeah. Three, four meetings during the year. I'll have to look that up. That's usually during the school year, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I believe, Jeff and Steve, that they're not, they haven't been scheduled yet. Usually they'll contact us, and then um, probably in October, and then start setting it up to start working on the school calendar. But I'm I don't have a knowledge of anything set set yet, so I don't believe it is. That's all I have. Thanks. Sit down, drink. All right. Uh, several items I'll touch base on. Uh, first of all, just a thank you to all the staff uh, for a very smooth start to the school year. Um, bus companies also reporting a very smooth start, so that was great news to hear as well. Uh, but thank you to the community for the uh, turnout at our open houses. Um, they were very busy that evening. Uh, schools look great, uh, so thanks to the custodians for all their work there. Uh, the district will be uh, participating in a school climate cohort. Uh, this was put together through MDE. It was a really nice opportunity that fit well with our uh, climate and culture work we're doing on the strategic planning side this year. So each building will be represented by at least uh, two employees and they will work with us as a group along with uh, several other districts as well. Um, we were able to uh, get them to have the training right here at Lakes Country Service Club, which was uh, really convenient obviously for our district. And so that was a uh, that was a nice turn of events. Uh, but the first meeting for that will take place this coming Monday. Uh, we will also be testing out uh, 7 a.m. on Wednesday morning, the new code red, code yellow buttons uh, to make sure they're functioning properly. Uh, so it will be a good uh, opportunity to see uh, how those are working. And then I did want to touch base. Uh, thank you to Elaine and the staffs at the various school buildings. We do have some preliminary fall enrollment numbers. 
Uh, those are up on your screen. Um, I will share these with a caveat. Um, the numbers from IQ Academy uh, for fiscal year 20, so the 444, uh, this should be an unduplicated <coughs> number. Uh, the number that um, you see under fiscal year 19, the 491, um, we believe that that's going to be, in some cases, a duplicated child count. Uh, so that could be a little bit uh, misleading. All in all, uh, you can see the numbers down below when you compare from building to building where we're at. Uh, McKinley, uh, 24 students fewer this year at this point in time. Adams, 23 students fewer. Uh, Cleveland up seven. Uh, the big gain is at KSS up 33. Uh, the ALC is a wash uh, at 82 students. And then IQ Academy, uh, which has a very, very fluid enrollment, uh, is at minus 47. But we believe that's a partial reflection of some duplication from the prior year. Uh, so you put all of those numbers together. And the start of this school year, uh, it's 54 students fewer than fiscal year 19. Fiscal year 19 ending? Because oh. of the ALC enrollment is what I'm thinking, you know, how it it just continues to rise. I'm assuming both of these both are, are the start of the year. Okay, yeah. thank you. Now, do you see uh, an increase throughout the year with new kids coming in? Or, I mean, there's a kind of a wash with kids leaving, kids coming during the year. Um, that's tough for me to answer. You know, yeah. I've been here. But, but yes, there is some yeah. variability throughout the year. Yeah. Uh, you will see the IQ Academy go up, mm -hmm. okay. but uh, the rest of them vary. In some years they go up, other years they go down. Mm -hmm. it's just are they typically from all over, or is it more kids leaving the brick and mortar to the IQ? Would you Would you say? Uh, no, I think if we see any growth in the IQ, it's mostly from other districts. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, for a variety of reasons, but sure. uh, yeah. we're looking for a home. Okay. And I believe uh, by the end of uh, last fiscal year, IQ Academy's enrollment was somewhere in the 600s or so, mm -hmm. so that the uh, sure. district could see quite a bit of growth or change in those numbers over the course of the year. Um, are there any quite other questions about the enrollment piece? I think you, you would tend to expect a little bit of reduction in enrollment because you're looking at classes in the 230, 240 range in the high school, and yet what's coming in and even what's in the first and second grade are all right around 200. Seems like a trend. The elementary sections uh, down low are getting larger. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have 10 sections in kindergarten. Yeah. That, yeah. So we do. I believe it was predicted that we would have a little bit of a dip and then that's going to um, swell back up later. Okay. Then uh, this, this is uh, very, very new information. I haven't had a chance to go through and really analyze it yet. Um, and that's going to be a small font for folks. But this is our student data from the spring MCA scores. Uh, the main thing that I'll just point out tonight is if you look in this column, this is the difference between the, the results of the Fergus Falls public school students and you're starting out with um, grade three up in the upper left corner here, going down into KSS with grade 11 where we happen to be looking at math right now. Um, and you can see that anything in the blue means that our students performed higher than the state average. So we have a solid column of blue, that's where you want to be. Uh, in comparison, in uh, the 2018 results, you saw that the fifth graders happened to be 1% below the state average on that math test uh, at that time. That's quite a jump. Uh, yeah, that's a nice jump because <clears throat> those kids went from minus one and then you push them down a grade, so they are last year's sixth graders. Um, that was an 11% jump. Uh, really, really nice, uh, nice job there by the staff and the students. Uh, then you also have a grade 11 ALC. 
uh, data here in comparison to state averages and then IQ uh, Academy pieces there as well. Then if we drop down below uh, the reading scores, again looking at this column with the difference in the blue, um, so this would be our, our typical brick and mortar then set up grades three through 10. Uh, you see that all of our classes, all of our students performed above the state average in reading on the MCA last spring. Uh, then you have uh, grade 10 ALC students in the darker gray and then IQ results in the cells right below that. And then uh, I don't know if this has been shared with the board or not. We certainly can. Uh, but you have a lot, lot of longitudinal data that shows the results over uh, numerous years for comparison sake. And then the last one uh, is the test in science. Uh, just remember that's uh, grades 5, 8, and it says high school. Typically that's tested in 10th grade when biology is taken. Uh, but again, uh, really nice results here uh, from the students uh, well above the state average in science. Um, and that looks like the last couple years that's been uh, been the case well above and uh, nice data there uh, showing some good uh, good student performance from the district kids uh, again um, high school ALC in the darker gray and then in the lighter gray uh, some IQ Academy test data um, we will work on putting together some comparisons of other regional schools so that you can see uh, how the district's performance stacked up in that regard. Uh, but on a preliminary basis uh, to see in our uh, traditional settings, all of our students in math, reading, and science were above the state average. That's a really um, point of pride for the district. And that's it for my report, unless there are any questions. Any questions for Superintendent Craig? Thank you. Moving on to general consent items. We have the minutes for the August 26, 2019 board meeting. Uh, bills and Treasurer's report. Yes, uh, Natalie and I did uh, review the bills with uh, Mark before this meeting. Um, nothing significant to report. Um, we you know, started the, the month with uh, $8 million or so in the, in the uh, main account, and we're just nearly $11 million right now, so it was uh, a little more coming in from the state and other sources that uh, were less going out. So um, we got a little bit of an education on uh, recoding, and we also learned uh, how different vendors do things differently than others. And, and they have some of them charge for every little item, and some of them pretty much put things together. So it was an educational thing. We learned what huddle is. Huddle is uh, HUDL is a, it's a it's something that uh, we pay some money to, so that where they take games and that saves the district money, so that the coaches don't have to go to every game and they can view the tapes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I learned a lot. Yeah, it's good. But, uh, everything seems to be in order. So that's my report. Okay. Personnel, Elaine. We have a few hires. We're slowly down on that piece, which is a good thing. Um, certified staff hire, Kathleen Rittenauer, physical education teacher, part-time for pupil for IQ Academy, as you recall, Kathleen did be prior at the uh, uh, end, of, end of last year, basically. She will be coming back at a part-time status for our IQ Academy. As far as support staff hires, a few of those, Trisha Reimer, special ed paraprofessional at Kennedy Secondary School, Kristen Rowland, uh, and our supervisor at Cleveland, and Ann Taylor, piano, Companist at Kennedy Secondary School. And then uh, in the new business items, I also have a request for an additional special ed paraprofessional in the hire of Carolyn Anderson, and that's due to a new uh, student and the needs of that student. Um, so I'm requesting that um, further down in the new business. So I recommend those for approval. Do we have a motion to approve the general consent items? So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? General consent items passed. There is no old business. Moving on to new business. Uh, item number one is the adult basic education. 
consortium membership agreement between ISD 544 ABE program and ISD 261 Ashby Public Schools effective uh, July 1st, 2019 through June 30th, 2020. Do we have a motion to approve that? So moved. Do we have a second? A second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item number two is the addition of one FTE special education paraprofessional position and the hire of Carolyn Anderson, effective 9 2019. Uh, do we have a motion to approve that? So moved. Do we have a second? A second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item number three is the 2019 2020 contract for services with Lakes Country Service Co-op for secondary vocational services. And we did get that <laughs> services. Uh, we did get that in our packet. Uh, do we have, would somebody offer that motion to approve? So moved. Do we have second? A second. Uh, any discussion on that item? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Um, we are going to be going to a closed session uh, permitted by Minnesota Statute 13D.03 to discuss negotiation strategies related to the district's negotiations with the Fergus Falls Education Association. Um, following that, we will reopen to close our meeting. Um, so for the public, uh, some meeting schedules here. The uh, 2019 Minnesota School Board Association meeting for us, just to put your calendar, is Wednesday, September 11th from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Lakes Country Service Cooperative. There will be a special school board meeting Monday, September 16th at 5 p.m. right here at our community room. Uh, the MREA 2019 Fall Membership Meeting will be Wednesday, September 25th from 7 to 9 at Staples Motley School District Office. And then our next regular school board meeting will be Monday, September 23rd at 515 right here at the Art of Community Room, Kennedy Secondary School. Following the adjournment of our meeting, we will go into a work session to talk about food service and strategic planning. So with that, do I have a motion to close the meeting? I move to close the meeting. Do I, I second that. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of closing the meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? We are closed.